What's up, Taiwan? I'm Tiffany Wong with news from here in Taiwan and around the world. President Lai Ching-te says he hopes to increase the country's disaster prevention budget after Typhoon Kratong caused flooding and landslides last week. Lai said the proposal would increase the disaster prevention budget by close to 500 million U.S. dollars in 2025 to around 1.7 billion U.S. dollars in total. Lai made the announcement in New Taipei City, where he visited areas that were damaged when last week's typhoon overwhelmed flood control measures. Several parts of Taiwan saw serious agricultural damage from Typhoon Kraton last week. Some people are seeking help to cover their losses. Cadence Quaranta reports. While the worst of the strong winds and rain brought by Typhoon Kraton are over, some sectors are set to continue feeling its effects. The storm caused serious damage to agriculture in several areas. In the southern city of Kaohsiung, shrimp farmers say they lost millions of shrimp because of power outages during the typhoon. Without power, the breeders weren't able to get oxygen to their shrimp. The power outages also caused some fish farmers in Kaohsiung to lose large amounts of fish. The dead fish smelled so bad that some farmers paid out of pocket to have them cleaned up. Further north in Zhanghua, sesame farmers are also seeing losses. Typhoon Graton brought strong winds to the area, but not much rain, a combination that can be deadly for crops. Storm winds brought salt from the ocean, but unlike with some other typhoons, there wasn't enough rain to dilute the salt or wash it away. <laughs> Following the typhoon, farmers are asking for help from the government, hoping they will take their losses seriously. They pointed to times in the past when they felt authorities hadn't given them enough support. In the aftermath of Typhoon Kraton, Although Taiwan is no longer bracing for wind or rain and schools and businesses are open again, farmers and breeders across the country will grapple with the storm's impact for some time to come. Chris Ma and Cadence Quaranta for Taiwan Plus. Typhoon Kraton may also affect rice crops in one central Taiwan county. The typhoon brought strong winds to Yunlin when the rice plants were flowering, an important part of the crop cycle. Farmers are worried those flowers were affected by the wind, which could impact their later harvests. They fear they could lose up to 20 percent of their crop. President Lai ching de has said the People's Republic of China, or PRC, is not Taiwan's motherland. Lai was speaking at a national day event ahead of the 113th anniversary of the Republic of China, Taiwan's official name. His remarks weren't an apparent reference to Taiwanese celebrities who wished a happy birthday to the, quote, motherland on the PRC 75th National Day last week. In his speech, Lai urged people to continue to fight for Taiwan's sovereignty and democracy. He also thanked the central and local governments for their response to Typhoon Kraton. The biggest group of Chinese tourists since the COVID-19 pandemic has arrived in Taiwan's Jinmen Islands. It marks a turning point in the currently sour cross-strait relations, but may not be enough to help Taiwan's wallowing tourism industry. A long-awaited vacation. Over 100 Chinese tourists from Xiamen arrived on Taiwan's outlying Jinmen Island on Saturday. It's the biggest group of tourists to arrive since Taiwan and China imposed a mutual travel ban five years ago during the COVID-19 pandemic. Many of the visitors, families bringing their kids for the first time. Not 
哦，电话十十一长假哈。对，第一次来金门。Jinmen residents have been eagerly awaiting Chinese tourists, who used to bring in around 200 million U.S. dollars a year to the local economy. Tour operators and local businesses in Jinmen and beyond suffered during the travel ban and are now cautiously optimistic that the reopening to Chinese tourism could mark a turning point. But the 100 Chinese tourists who just arrived is a tiny number compared to the 800,000 that used to visit Jinmen each year. As more Chinese tourists come, fostering people-to-people -people exchanges across the strait, Taiwan's government will have to figure out the best way to balance the country's economic needs and national security concerns. Patrick Chen and Tiffany Wong for Taiwan Plus. A New Zealand Navy vessel has sunk off the coast of Samoa. New Zealand's defense minister says, ministry says the ship ran aground while doing a reef survey. Videos and photos published by local media showed clouds of smoke coming from the ship before it capsized. All 75 crew and passengers on board were safe after leaving the ship on lifeboats and with help from nearby vessels. The defense ministry says the cause of the grounding is still under investigation. Demonstrators around the world have taken to the streets to show support for Palestinians on the eve of the anniversary of the attacks on Israel that led to the war in Gaza. Protests calling for an end to the violence in the Middle East have been held in countries like the U.S., Canada, Chile and Spain. Demonstrators in Washington, D.C. also called on their government to stop supplying military aid to Israel. During the marches, protesters spoke out against Israel's continued siege on Gaza and its recent military assault in Lebanon. What Israel is doing is a war crime. They continue to inflict pain and injustice onto the Palestinian people, now the Lebanese people as well, and world leaders must align themselves with uh, the most basic tenets of human rights. The war in Gaza began after Hamas militants attacked Israel on October 7th last year, killing around 1,200 people and taking another 250 hostage. Gaza's health ministry says Israel's war against Hamas has killed nearly 42,000 Palestinians. Taiwanese tech manufacturing giant Foxconn has reported record third quarter sales of almost 58 billion U.S. dollars. The iPhone manufacturer saw sales up 20% from the same period last year. Foxconn credited its cloud and networking services for the AI industry for the record performance. Analysts said the new iPhone 16, which launched in September, also helped. Foxconn expects sales to continue to grow in the fourth quarter, which is a peak season for the industry. Cerebral palsy can severely impact a person's motor and verbal skills, making it almost impossible to pursue a passion for music. But as Reese Ayers reports, one workshop in Taipei is finding ways to make music accessible for all. Sixty-year-old Yuan Mei Feng has long had an interest in music. But due to being diagnosed with a form of cerebral palsy at six months old, her physical limitations made pursuing it a challenge. But now she's had an opportunity to express her inner rhythm. Yuan, alongside her classmates, is learning to make music, despite the neurological disorders that affect their motor skills. The 12-week course in music production is a collaboration between the Taipei Music Center and Taiwan's Cerebral Palsy Association, 
offering students much more than a chance to create their own music. Facing different physical and vocal limitations, the students explore different ways to make their own unique sounds. Already halfway through their program, the students use accessible software to produce entire songs with help from music industry experts. I've been trying to make them tap their feet a little bit, you know, and try to feel the groove in the body, you know, and try to feel it in your, you know, just every, every part of your bones, you know, I think that's the magic trick over there with, with music anyway, yeah. Cerebral palsy, or CP, appears in early childhood and can vary greatly in severity. It permanently impacts movement and coordination, often affecting a person's speech functions. Through rhythm games and by manipulating a variety of musical instruments, students engage their motor skills, an important form of physical therapy for people with cerebral palsy. CP is one of the most prevalent conditions impacting movement in the world, affecting around 3.3 in every thousand births in Taiwan. The roughly 70,000 people living with CP in Taiwan face unique challenges throughout their entire lives. 那根据年纪的这个增长，它就有不同的挑战、不同的困难。哈，像在学校里面求学，它需要有一些无障碍空间，那需要有一些呃课业上面的调整。But with support and opportunities like this music production course, people like Yuan Mei Feng can pursue passions that previously felt out of reach. 希望能够有机会能够为自己创作出一首歌。Karma Xu and Reese's in Taipei for Taiwan Plus. There have been more sightings of several species of birds of prey in southern Taiwan, thanks to a special project between the local government and farmers. Sandy Chi has the story. An eastern grass owl is spotted for the first time on the plains of the Gaoping River in Kaohsiung in southern Taiwan. This remarkable sighting is just one of a growing number. The area has also seen the arrival of a variety of other birds of prey including the collared scopsail and the black-winged kite. The population of these bird species in southern Taiwan has surged, with sightings jumping from just 17 to over 100 in the past few years. That is thanks to the joint efforts of Kaohsiung's government and local farmers. Together, they've built nearly 100 perches throughout the area. These perches are part of a forestry bureau scheme launched in 2022. The initiative pays ecosystem wages to people who help protect the habitats of vulnerable species. Farmer Hua Mengsheng is one of those involved in the program. And he's also working with academic institutions, helping them set up two more observation perches. He has not only seen scopsowls and other birds of prey in his fields, but also witnessed how these birds help him manage his farm. Now with purchase set up across Kaohsiung, people taking part in the project are looking to make southern Taiwan ground zero for a more biodiverse and environmentally sustainable Taiwan. Scott Huang and Sani Chi for Taiwan Plus. Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. You can visit the Taiwan Plus website or follow our social media for more stories from Taiwan and around the world. Before we go, we leave you with images of the National Day concert last night. Taiwanese singer Jody Chiang performed after nine years of retirement. I'm Tiffany Wong. Take care and see you next time.